Is it possible to feel that love in the womb? Yes. But that love you felt wasn't necessarily permanent. You've attached yourself to it, like maybe your mother's been going through a bad time yep. and doesn't want you, but it doesn't mean she doesn't love you. Um, yeah, she, you know, she may, like a lot of what happens with a lot of pregnancies, particularly in, in generations ago and, and the older generations, and it happened in my own case, is where a mother gets pregnant out of wedlock or something like that at 16 or 17. Um, and then, of course, you know, what's, what's going to happen to her, you know, you know 10, 20, well, 30 or 40 years ago, what would have happened? There's so much ostracism, so much judgment, like so much family issues about it. And, and you know, right at that moment, they probably felt like they wished they'd never done it and wished that this, this little person inside of her was never there. And then, you know, they'll feel even guilty about their own thought of that a lot of times. But that emotion has entered you. Mm. Yes. Yeah. So with a mother having lost a child, what can she do to in, in pregnancy? Yeah. In miscarriage. What can she do to? Is there anything she can do to help that lost child? And that lost child is automatically cared for by a celestial spirit in the spirit world mm -hmm. in Summerland. Um, the, the issue the mother needs to address is let go of firstly her grief about the losing of the child, but secondly she needs to let herself feel about some of the causal emotions that caused her body to reject the child. Right? And there are emotions that cause miscarriages. And oftentimes the emotions that cause miscarriages are about how you feel about yourself, how badly you feel about yourself as a woman, or how badly you feel about the opposite sex. You follow me? And a lot of times a miscarriage will result... Let's say you have a male child growing inside and you feel really angry with the opposite sex, then that male child is already feeling like you're angry with it. You follow me? And so is it feeling wanted? No. And if, the, if you feel really bad about yourself as a woman, you feel that women have a terrible lot in life and you feel that... You know, all that women are just going to experience a lot of bad things in their life, and you have all these emotions that you've unresolved as a woman, and you've got them quite strongly in different ways. If a girl child is growing inside of you, what is she going to be feeling? That she's unworthy, that she's no good, you know, that she's going to have a terrible life. You know, she's feeling exactly those emotions, not being able to verbalize them, of course, but feeling them. And so often these kind of emotions are what cause these, these, um, you know, these miscarriages that occur. By the way, the father can cause a miscarriage in the mother as well by his emotions. So it's not just all to do with the mother's emotions. Now, because of that, the child miscarries. But the individualization process has been complete. The child is being looked after. You're, you, you will actually know that when you're in your sleep state. You'll be with the child in the sleep state anyway. Um, <coughs> So uh, understand that all you need to do is deal with your grief about the whole thing and you can have a very, very close relationship with the child. And so much so that you'll feel them with you all through your waking hours. You'll feel them sometimes even playing with your, own, your other children who are alive. You'll feel all sorts of things occurring. And I've actually talked to many miscarried children and, 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 and actually reintegrated them, if you could call it that, with their families when their families have been in emotional denial about the actual miscarriage. So if you go through emotional denial about the miscarriage, what that does is it sets up a barrier between you and that child. And the child doesn't want to come to you because every time they come to you, you feel sad. So what they'd like you to do is actually deal with your sadness, release your sadness, and then they can come to you and just enjoy your company. You follow me? Abortions are a bit different because abortions are where the mother made a choice or, the, or both parents or the father forced her into making a choice to get rid of the child. And that, that obviously has already had some quite strong emotional damage on that child. Right? Mm -hmm. They're still cared for in the spirit world in the same manner by a spirit, a celestial spirit who nurses them and cares for them and gives them love. <coughs> but it's rare for that spirit to encourage contact between the aborted child and its mother until its mother works through the reasons why she decided to abort her or 
or the father works through his reasons why he decided to force her into having an abortion. And so the child is protected from those emotions until the mother works through those emotions and then a, a, a relationship can be re-established. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, just to comment about abortions, um, there, is, there is often this um, feeling uh, that people have that I've got the right to decide whether this child lives or dies because we don't see the child as a, as a soul yet. We only see the child as a soul when it's born. Oh. But the truth is actually the child is a soul almost short, just a, there's a short period of time, just a few days after conception, that the child connects to the, these bodies. And from that moment on, the child is a child. And it's actually experiencing everything. Right? It's in, individualized and it's experienced everything. So, so the important thing to understand is that for any person who's experienced an abortion not knowing these facts is to actually work through some emotions about them because you will, you will find that there is some guilt or shame that you have about the abortion itself that is actually damaging you emotionally and it's a matter of working through those emotions. So I've had many, we've talked to many women obviously over these last five years or so who have then once they've realised the truth, gone through quite a lot of emotions about why they chose to actually have an abortion and what was the reasons inside of themselves that they chose to do that or their husbands for that. There was one lady I talked to who had 34 abortions. Her, her husband would get her pregnant. They were, they were, he was a Catholic man. He would get her pregnant and then force her into having an abortion. Um, and he did that, they had 34 abortions, she had 34 abortions, if you can imagine that. Um, so there's quite a few emotions she will have to work through regarding that herself. And also the man, because of his violence, uh, he was a policeman actually, um, he, because of his violence, and he murdered 34 children by his actions basically, um, he's got quite a poor condition as you can imagine. Um, and so he, he's not working through his stuff at all, by the way. <laughs> no. And you can see that he's still, he still justifies his own actions. But very damaging actions uh, that's been to her and to him and to the children involved, actually, as well. Um, and now, one of the children who survived, um, the only children that survived this man's actions and his forcing his wife into abortions all the time, there were, there were three children who survived that, that because the abortions failed or they were left too long before they could be carried out by a doctor. A doctor refused to carry it out. Even the doctor, by the way, has lots of issues to work through in this case, uh, emotionally, from a, from a law perspective of love, because he carried out, 30, the same doctor carried out these abortions, 34 abortions for one woman. So, you know, there's quite a lot of emotional issues to work through for every single person involved in these transactions. And um, the three children who survived, one of these ladies is working through her emotions on the divine love path. She wasn't wanted either, but, and her mother wanted to abort her, and the father wanted to abort her as well. But the doctor refused because her term had gone too long. And, uh, and so she's got some pretty deep emotions to work through about, like all of her life not being wanted <coughs> or loved by both of her parents. Yeah. So it's a pretty big issue actually yeah. on, in the world today. There's a lot of negative things being created by, by the abortion process. But again, don't judge the act. Get into the emotions that created the act. Because that's where, that's where <coughs> the truth is, in those emotions. So. Let's say if there's a woman who was 15 or 16, pregnant, and the thing that she'll need to do is work through some of these emotions of her parents forcing her into something she didn't want to do, you know, and all of those kind of things. That's what she needs to perhaps work her way through. If there's an older woman who was single, got pregnant, didn't want anyone to know, had an abortion instead, then she needs to work through some issues regarding, you know, how strongly she's willing to act just to stop other people from criticising her. So her fear of judgement is what caused her, you know, her fear perhaps of security, not being looked after, her fear of not knowing what to do, her, just her own confusion might be just an emotion she needs to work through. 
the key is to work through those emotions, not judge yourself for anything you may have done, but work through the emotions that caused you to make those decisions. Does that make sense? Yeah. So not, not, not the actual decision itself, but the emotion that created the decision. Because that's the real cause. Remember, it's the cause of emotion that creates these effects. The effect was an abortion. The cause of emotion was something else. Deal with that. All of God's laws, by the way, that operate upon the soul, operate on the cause of emotions. They don't operate on the effects. Do you, do you understand that? They will operate on the actual emotion that's inside of us. You think of the law of attraction that we've talked about a bit already yesterday. The law of attraction operates on the emotion you're feeling right at the moment. It doesn't operate on what you think or the effects of those emotions. It operates on the emotions themselves. Because that's what it's trying to expose, the emotions themselves. Yeah. So if you can focus on that, then you'll progress really rapidly. If you focus on feeling judged about the effects and you know, going into self-judgment about the things you've done in the past and all of those kind of things, Right? There are guilt. There is a penalty of the soul law of compensation where you will feel guilt and shame. Feel the guilt and shame. Right? Feel the emotion. You know, don't focus on what you did. Feel the emotion of what you did. Yeah? 